aflame. All the peoples of the United Nations are fighting the savage enemies of freedom. In many lands, towns are ravaged, countrysides laid waste by ruthless Axis hordes. Farms, cattle, and crops have been destroyed. Ruin, destitution, hunger stalk the helpless victims of the cruel aggressor. But in their darkest hour comes a light of hope, a light that must grow stronger and will grow stronger. It is the hope of American agriculture. Though this nation must fight to keep invaders from its own shores, its farmlands are abundant, greater even than the areas of Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Spain, Portugal, France, Switzerland, Great Britain, Poland, Czechoslovakia, Belgium, Holland, Yugoslavia, and Greece. And spread over this vast land are the farmers, their wives and their children. 30 million, twice as many as the Axis has soldiers. Grim farmers with sleeves rolled up, ready for sacrifices. These embattled farmers are armed. Their weapons are the panzer forces of food's battle line, farm machinery, battalions of combines, regiments of trucks, divisions of corn pickers, potato diggers, planting machines, columns of milking machines, and all these machines kept in repair by farmers and their sons under the stress of war. These farmers pouring out bumper crops to fill many a bare cupboard. The farmer with his wheat crop for this year, 52 billion 800 million pounds of wheat. If all this wheat were made into flour, there'd be enough to snow under the entire German Panzer Army. Looks to me like another Russian winter. Or if all this flour had been baked into bread, there would be enough loaves to build an Egyptian pyramid. And another, and another, and another. Placed a mile apart, they'd stretch the length of the Suez Canal. Supposing this flour had been made into spaghetti, look at the sweater you could knit. Just a snug fit for old Mother Earth. Corn, 2,850 million bushels. If all this were grown into one huge ear, it would make a bridge from London to the Black Sea. And that hangs right over your head, Adolf. Soybeans, 160 million bushels. Ground into flour, it would make a loaf that would fill Red Square in Moscow. And it has double the nutritive value of meat. Potatoes, 30 billion pounds, just about twice as high as the Rock of Gibraltar. Some potatoes. Here we have the Matterhorn in Switzerland, and this year's crop of tomatoes, 1 billion 800 million pounds. Vegetables, all kinds of them. There'd be enough to cover the wall of China, 1 billion bushels of them. Yes, and we're producing vitamins and food concentrates packed with enough power to bowl over the Axis nation. That was vitamin X, boys, just to mark the spot. Fruit juices, billions of gallons. If pressed from our fruit crop of 35 billion pounds, there would be enough to keep old faithful Geyser gushing for nearly four months. Or if all the fruit were made into one enormous pie, it would measure 25 miles in diameter. My, what a time a pie thrower could have with that. Milk, 125 billion pounds of it. If all this flowed over Niagara Falls in a steady stream, it would generate enough electricity to light every factory in New York for one hour. And besides, we'd have enough to give our children free milk with school lunches. Or should we churn this milk into butter? War-flooded fields of Holland could be reclaimed by dikes it would build. And if made into cheese, it would make a piece equivalent to this much of the moon. Just imagine a fire made from four volcanoes the size of Vesuvius and a griddle 500 square miles in area. That's what it would take to broil the 30 billion pounds of meat American farms are producing. This little girl grown plump on a diet of our 11 billion pounds of fats and oils would outweigh a hundred super dreadnoughts. And what's more, she'd black out all of Berlin. American hens are busy too, laying 50 billion eggs. If all these were made into one huge fried egg, it would cover all the United States and Canada. And don't forget we have enough bacon to go around it. And here come the pigs, 100 million strong. Just think of it, two pigs for every person in Great Britain and Ireland combined. Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Not the farmer of the United States who works and sacrifices to fill the holds of victory ships. Ships turned out by men and women working night and day. Ships that must be fought through dark oceans where submarines lurk. Ships guarded by aircraft, more and more of them. Ships protected by the blasting fire of men of war. Ships loaded with food for freedom, produced, fought through, and delivered to all who fight. 
for the freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom from want, freedom from fear. Under this insignia is shipped food that will win the war.